The fans are going bananas. You know, the last time that I performed here in Ottawa, I didn't know if I'd ever perform here again. I really didn't. But I got to tell you, when I walked in this arena today, all of the memories, they came flooding back because Ottawa, you and I share a lot of history. That reaction just gave me one more memory, so thank you. You know, on that note, I didn't know if I'd ever perform in Toronto again. Oh, I know, but it's my hometown. Come on. I get it, I get it. But this Wednesday, I guess it's kind of fitting that I'm facing a guy who I thought for 40 years has been my best friend. So Christian Cage, I'm talking to you now. I'm not gonna call you Jay, Jay's dead. I don't know what you've become. Actually, I do know what you've become. You've become Christian Cage. You've bought it all, man. The ego, it's out of control. And here's the thing, we became best friends before we ever got into this industry. Sure, it was this business, it was this sport that cemented our friendship, but we were friends before we ever got into it. So I assumed we'd be friends after. Yeah, man, sitting on my deck, sipping some scotch, talking hockey, reminiscing about chasing our dreams, but not just chasing our dreams, crushing our dreams. We did that. <laughs> and then I fast forward to now. You know, we had talked about me coming to AEW. You, you were on board. And I came here, I came here to end my career with you, to retire with you. I didn't come here to take away your spotlight, to take away your shine, to take away the things that you worked your ass off for and you deserve them. I didn't come here to take that. No matter what you think, no matter what that human goiter, Nigel McGuinness thinks. <laughs> Hello, goiter. Well, okay, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> you wanted to change all that. At World's End, I failed. And I'm not used to repeated failures. They don't exist in my world. So I pick myself up, I dust myself off, and I walked forward, always forward, and I'm stronger and better for it. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna earn my championship title shot. So I started the Cope Open, and I earned it. I earned that title shot. And what happened when I did? Well, you and the patriarchy, you took me out with a concerto. <laughs> a move, a move that we created, so maybe that's fitting too. But when I was on the shelf, when I was out from that concerto, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from a man who in the past, he's had to remind me of who I am. And he called me again to remind me of who I am. So I took some cues from that guy, took some cues from another sociopath because they created Barbie, they created Janice, so I got to work and I created. I created Spike. Now see, Spike, she's hungry and she wants to take a bite out of your bony ass, Christian. So that phone call from Mrs. Foley's baby boy, well it worked because I remember, I remember who I am. I've kept it bottled up, but I am the rated R superstar. I am a man that has dark caves in my head that you don't have and you've never navigated them. But be thankful for that. Only you won't be thankful after this Wednesday because this Wednesday you're gonna be in the hospital. Spike and I are gonna change you, man. We're gonna take away your pride. We're gonna take away your ego. We're gonna take away your manhood. This Wednesday, two kilometers up from where we trained at Sully's Gym with Ron Hutchison, I'm gonna make you say two words that will cause you never to be able to look your daughters in the eyes again. Spike and I are gonna take away your pride. We're gonna make you say two words. Those two words are I quit. 
40 years, 40 years after this all started, in our hometown, it ends. It is all coming up live Wednesday night.